What if I told you that in 2007, the New England Patriots were attempting to pull off one of the most significant draft day trades of the past 20 years? acquiring future Hall of Famer Randy Moss from the Oakland Raiders. The Patriots and Raiders making it official, Oakland sending disgruntled yet talented wide receiver Randy Moss to New England for a fourth round draft pick. The trade would lead to great what ifs involving championship teams, a future Hall of Fame quarterback, and would even help modernize the way offense was played. Here is again, like a statue in the pocket, able to go long for Moss. Moss has his first touchdown as a Patriot. But what if I also told you that Moss, well, he wasn't supposed to be a Patriot at all. In fact, he was headed to Green Bay. The whole Randy Moss deal, which I have tried to be quiet on that whole deal, but we had every opportunity to, to try to get them to sign Randy Moss. So what happened? Let's find out. The Raiders introduced yet another wideout with top-notch credentials Wednesday, Randy Moss. In 2006, Randy Moss was in his second season with the Oakland Raiders. And he was miserable. Hey, y'all get that mic out of here, man. We tired of y'all. Randy was a long way from his glory days back in Minnesota, where he would announce his arrival as one of the most physically talented players to ever play in the NFL. And it is Moss getting position. Touchdown. Oh, He's oh, unstoppable. Man. However, after a 2-7 and seven start to the season, Moss would begin to vocalize how unhappy he was and how he couldn't find much excitement being a member of the Raiders. The team ended up losing the rest of their games, finishing the 2006 season with a horrible 2-14 record, with Moss playing through injury, ending his season with just 42 catches for 553 yards and three touchdowns. The Raiders would go on to fire head coach Art Shell and replace him with Lane Kiffin, a first-time NFL head coach. However, anyone with eyes could see. It was too little too late for Moss. It was very clear. Moss in silver and black just wasn't going to work out. Moss wanted and needed out. So, then owner Al Davis would grant Moss's wish, but he was coming off the worst season of his career. And there was questions about whether he retained the elite speed that had made him the greatest deep threat in league history. Salary was another potential issue as he was expected to earn 9.25 million in 2008. So the real question at the time was, was Moss really worth it? Regardless of those seemingly major issues, heading into the 2007 NFL Draft, Al Davis and the Raiders would begin to entertain trade options for Moss. See, Moss was a once-in-a-generation talent, the kind of player who, if right, could change a franchise. And Green Bay's general manager, Ted Thompson, he knew that. How about a big wide receiver in Randy Moss? How about that as a big wide receiver? Well, there's would, that, another would, would that work? Would that work for Brett in his yes, 17th would. season? They would, they would make it work. So the night before the draft, he would begin to engage with Al Davis about a potential trade. I think with Moss, if I'm at the end of my career, I, and I'm a great football player, but I haven't had any kind of Super Bowl, I want to sniff at a Super Bowl, and I don't think Green Bay sniffs. Ted Thompson was famously known for keeping his cards close to his chest. That he even sometimes withheld exactly how he felt about prospects until draft day even from his own staff. But this was different. He made very clear to his top guys he wanted Moss, just not for Davis's initial asking price, a second round pick. And the Patriots, the only other serious team involved in trade talks, felt the same way. But what the Patriots didn't know was Green Bay's franchise quarterback, Brett Favre and Moss, both had the same agent, Buss Cook. And behind the scenes, both Cook and Favre have been lobbying for Moss to become a Packer for weeks prior to the draft. The only holdup for Moss at the time was an aging Favre in his on-again, off-again retirement. I, I don't know what I'm uh, leaning towards. This may be it this year. It, it may be two years down the road. I mean, for the last seven years, we've been talking about when I was leaving. In order for Randy to head to Green Bay and feel comfortable, he needed to be sure Favre was going to be there another two to three years. If so, he was all in. But the thing is, Favre was 37 years old and had just finished his 16th NFL season. And Moss didn't want to go to Green Bay only for the quarterback to step away. At the time, neither Moss nor anyone else for that matter knew much about Favre's backup who had attempted all of 31 passes in his career with no touchdowns and one interception. You know, some guy named Aaron Rodgers. But Moss was in a win now mode, not a potential rebuild. So Cook called Favre to relay Moss's question about whether Favre would stick around. The Packers had gone 8-8 eight eight the season before and missed the playoffs for the second consecutive year. 
They were unproven at wide receiver and Moss offered a possibility that was both exciting and divisive. Divisive because he played for a divisional rival just two years prior. And in his last season with the Vikings, Moss would have one of his best games during the playoff game at Lambeau Field and decided to do this to the fans. And you know what he did? He ran over the goalpost and he acted like he was pulling his pants down to the crowd. Mm. I've never seen that before in my life. Bob Harlan, the Packers chairman and CEO at the time, said before the draft, with rumors of Moss coming to Green Bay, he would receive a lot of anonymous calls and estimated that 65% of the fan base hated a deal for Moss, especially coming off of a 553-yard season. But Favre wanted Moss, and his answer to Cook was unequivocal. If the Packers made the trade, you've got him for two to three more years in Green Bay. Favre would even offer to restructure his contract to Adam. So, with both sides realizing this could be real, all the front office had to do was figure out what the best trade scenario would be, and the deal was all but done. However, with the Packers not moving on the initial offer that was on the table, which was Moss for a second rounder, when they offered Moss for a fifth, talks would stall. So as draft day approached and the first and second rounds came and went, Davis would re-engage with Green Bay. Now, a third rounder for Moss didn't sound so bad. But instead of making the trade in the third round, the Packers would draft receiver James Jones from San Jose State. End zone caught for the touchdown, James Jones. While still in communication with the Raiders, by all accounts, the Packers thought they had time. Harlan said Thompson never checked in with him that night regarding Moss, suggesting nothing was urgent. At the end of day one of the draft, Thompson would tell reporters any trade for Moss would take place the following day. And according to then Packers personnel analyst John Snyder, everyone in the front office went to bed that night assuming they were going to acquire Randy Moss in the morning. But you know what they say about people who assume? It's been rumored for weeks. Sunday, our Adam Schefter broke the story. The Patriots and Raiders making it official. Oakland sending disgruntled yet talented wide receiver Randy Moss to New England for a fourth round draft pick. Coach, uh, the first question is, uh, why would you trade Randy Moss away when you've just drafted a quarterback like Jamarcus Russell? The Packers were blindsided. Mike McCarthy, then entering his second season as the Packers head coach, met up with Thompson that morning as the two searched for answers as how the deal had fallen apart. According to reports, there was an awkward silence throughout the whole building. No yelling, no arguing, just silence. Everyone knew a massive opportunity had slipped away, but nobody wanted to address the elephant in the room. Except for Favre. He had a lot to say. The whole Randy Moss deal, which I have tried to be quiet on that whole deal. Um, I worked my butt off two years ago to try to get them to sign Randy Moss. And I'll be, I mean, I'm being as honest as I, as I can be. I've told the media, nah, you know, did I want him? Yeah, you know. But we had every opportunity to, to sign him. And had we offered him $3 million guaranteed instead of 1.6 and 100000 $100, per game, if he dresses for that game, if we'd have just given him the $3 million guaranteed and taken off the second year, we'd have had him. I know that for a fact. And when they wouldn't do that, I'd offer to give up part of my salary. I, I tell them all this stuff, you know, and they, uh, you know, Randy can't really run anymore. We we'll watch him on film, he takes plays off, and all, you know, all this stuff. I'm here, and I'm like, look, the guy is scheduled to make $9 million with Oakland, nine and a half, or whatever. And he is willing to drop six million, six and a half million dollars, whatever, for one year. That tells me a lot. And I know there's been some bad blood with Randy and all that stuff, I and mean, he stuck it to us and a couple of things, but you know what? People can change. So, what happened? Well, Green Bay was under the assumption they were the only team in play for Moss at the time. Hence, the casual nature of getting the deal done. And from the outside looking in, it would seem the Patriots offered the better deal a fourth rounder from Moss instead of a fifth rounder that the Packers had offered, and sooner. But what the Packers were unaware of is not only had the Patriots been courting Moss months in advance, with players like receiver Doug Gabriel, a former teammate of Moss's in Oakland who praised the way New England operated, and their franchise quarterback Tom Brady, who the two had a secret meeting halfway through the middle of the previous season where Moss would start to voice his frustration. But ultimately, the big joker on the table for the Patriots? Well, they had family ties, literally. Scott Pioli, the de facto general manager for the Patriots, 
and Al Davis had a unique connection through one of the game's greatest coaches. What's one word to describe be having Bill Parcells as your father-in-law? And his wife? Well, she was Al Davis's goddaughter. So, Scott knew the Patriots needed to upgrade at receiver, and Randy Moss, the greatest of his generation and one of the greatest of all time, he was available. He would offer Davis and the Raiders a fourth round pick for Moss, but the fourth round started in less than 11 hours. So, the clock was ticking. Piola would make the final offer to the Raiders and wait for a response from Davis. Luckily for him, Randy Moss to New England for the Patriots' fourth round selection, a pick that Oakland used on John Bowie, a cornerback from Cincinnati. Thompson, true to form, never did open up about Green Bay's pursuit of Moss, leaving part of the mystery unexplained when he passed in 2021. Shortly after the trade, Moss said he thought the Packers were too focused on all the things Moss needed to do for the deal to work from a Green Bay standpoint, while the Patriots showed him the respect he was seeking. New England's willingness to do a shorter deal was also another factor. In Moss's first season with New England, he set the NFL record for receiving touchdowns on an offense that shattered the record for scoring. New England reached the Super Bowl after the only 16-0 regular season in NFL history. The Packers, they would go 13-3 before losing in overtime to the Giants in the NFC Championship game. Tom Brady would ultimately win MVP, while Favre finished second in voting. For the Packers, the trade remains one of the great hypotheticals in franchise history. What if Moss had been on that 2007 team? Would the Packers have won the Super Bowl? If so, would Green Bay have kept Favre and traded Rodgers? Because one of the rumors at the time was Rodgers was included in that trade deal for Moss which would have sent Rodgers to Oakland. According to league sources, Packers Raiders were very close on a deal that would have sent you to Oakland and Randy Moss to Green Bay instead of Moss traded to New England during 2007 and you stayed, of course, in Green Bay. Is that true? Uh, there, there were definitely some rumors at the time. Instead, 2007 turned out to be Favre's final season in Green Bay. After another false retirement, the Packers would trade him to the Jets, clearing the path for Rodgers who won four MVPs and a Lombardi Trophy before he, too, would follow his predecessor's footsteps off to New York. Moss and Favre would eventually play together with the Vikings in the 2010 season. Though only for four games, those games were a tease for what could have been if Green Bay and the front office decided to pull the trigger sooner. 